The Shipyard Pajama Party, created by Dawn Glenn and Lucy Macy. Debsey and Makepeace, Series 2, Episode 5, Tequila Sunrise. Okay, Doc, I'm ready to go. Okay, so, um, yeah, play now, I guess. Okay. Oh, there they are. Yep. Oh, in her, in her tie. In her tie. <laughs> you see, watching kids playing while she's in school uniform. Oh. Why do the kids, kids just look like they're playing on a building site? Mind I guess we did that in the 80s. Yes, you did. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't so much housing safety back then, was there really? No. <laughs> they certainly wouldn't be, the police wouldn't be just sitting watching a man in a chicken suit go up and offer kids freebies of yeah, some kind. I know, you'd be a bit dubious, like some man dressed in a very bad chicken suit. Yes. Oh, here they come. <laughs> and um, the outfits are very um, super 80s. Hers is mega 80s. Pixie boots. Oh, with the, the, the shirt and the belt. <laughs> shirt and the belt, oversized cardigan. Oh, no, that's not like oversized. I can't beat a good cardi even now. Oh, look, luncheon vouchers on the window. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know, actually, I never knew anyone that used lunch and vouchers, but then I was too young to have known if anyone did. Yeah, what that was about, you know. Yay, they exposed the bad guy. Oh, I'd like to look at all the classic cars on there. I don't know what that one is behind. Mm-hmm. It's when you see a Ford Capri, it's like, yeah, classic. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of... <laughs> this is quite a, a humorous start for the Dempsey Meeks, isn't it? <laughs> or the guy dressed in a chicken suit and a load of kids screaming. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, what's this guy's name? Is it him that's the, the one that you... The bad guy is Milton Johns. What else has he been in? I recognise him. Um, I shall have a quick look. Man, are we to get... Chicken man is shot dead. And he played the landlord in the Basil Brush show from 2002 to 2007. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Oh, classic theme tune. was a bit sort of square and then three she has that side part thing season yeah is my favorite excuse me i'm burping already <laughs> yeah i have a shot people <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> i've just had fish and chips so you know it's inevitable oh, oh i had pasta for my tea so i had fish and chips well i actually didn't have fish and chips last night i had halloumi and chips so. oh lovely do <laughs> Did, it, did, did you ever see the um on I think it was on the DVD there was a behind the scenes where they're talking about um that that the explosion. It, and the explosion, yes. the explosion at the end of the credits and apparently he said something about doing it um Michael Brandon said something about doing a test run and they said that they were so they were in the um trailer I guess whatever back then and they said it went off and the whole thing lifted. And they said if they'd been on set, it probably would have killed them. It was like, yes. <laughs> she said, you wouldn't get away with any of that now, would you? Nope. It makes you wonder what they got away with in the 1980s. Oh, I know. Oh, the brilliant Ray Smith. Oh. We I used to be spiders. scared of Spy Kings when I was younger, but now I think he's actually quite cool. Yeah, me too. <laughs> he's a bit... I like that. You know, I suppose it's a very um, tropey thing, you know, like the, the grumpy sergeant or boss you know like in the Sweeney and yeah um, yeah because uh, Reynold Graham that created this we also worked on the Sweeney and the professionals yeah and I think a lot of the scripts were actually written for those series but then 
modified for the make piece part to become obviously change the gender specific te like text in the yeah. script and then and this adds a little bit more feminine It'll things make, yeah. <laughs> yeah just to make it a bit more so I guess maybe that's why it works because it, i mean you didn't see any i mean it, it was one of the first female characters like this in that yeah. era i mean and you just started to get things like Julia Bravo and the gentle touch. But apart from that, there was never really much before that. No, exactly. So I think basically they don't see, um, Make Peace was maybe originally written as a male character and just they the just gender changed was changed it. just for this script, this yeah. programme. Michael Brandon said that originally... Hey. Character... Sorry, that Stephen Frost. Oh, oh yes. Legend, Stephen that is Stephen Frost. <laughs> Okay, got anyone listening to this, if you're ever in London and you get to go to um, check out the Comedy Store on a Wednesday and Sunday night, Stephen Frost often performs with the Comedy Store players. And I've seen him quite a few times and he is hilarious. <laughs> Actually, they're all hilarious. But it's, it was really weird seeing him in this, like, from 30 whatever years ago. <laughs> you know, I've, I've seen this episode. It's one of the episodes I've seen more than others. I still can tell you what the actual plot is about. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell you what the bad guy's name is. No. I mean, there's, there's some that kind of follow the plot, like in uh, The Burning and stuff. I know what's happening there. But this one, yeah. I'm like, oh, there's something I can't remember. He's like, um, he's like a, a protection racket for like, oh, local right. businesses. Yeah. And like, so they all pay him like a protection fee. And I, I, but I have no idea what relevance Chicken had at the beginning. No. And giving out those flyers to oh, children. Right, not, not a clue what that was all about. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, but the thing is, that MC Mapies isn't one of those shows where I would just watch the shippy scenes and not watch the rest. I would watch the whole episode. So I don't know. I suppose there isn't really shippy scenes. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Not many. <laughs> Pure shippy was, scenes. There isn't this one. I think that's why we chose this one to watch yeah. first. But yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a... I would watch the whole thing because I think because their interactions, no matter what they're talking about, are really enjoyable, you know? But obviously when it's when it's not Dempsey and Me piece, I'm just like, yeah, tuned out. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is, I mean, clearly there must have been, a, a, like, it is a great chemistry between them and the banter yeah. as well was yeah, pretty good. And I think that's why it was so popular. I mean, I think... I find it strange that, I mean, it, it's, it started on the 11th of January, 1985. Yeah. And it ended on the 1st of November, 1986. So, I, I mean, even though it's three series, it was only on it, on the, actually on screen for two years. Two years, yeah. And it's just, I mean, for something that popular, it's, I don't understand why it wasn't continued. I mean, I believe oh. it was to make way the budget went on to London's burning. But oh, right. well, I don't understand why there couldn't have been enough room on TV for both. But maybe no. I think it has an American financial influence. So maybe that was a factor. I don't know. But yeah, it was a shame it ended when it did. It, it was. It definitely had more life in it. A couple more seasons anyway. Oh, was it definitely. I mean, it was it finished at its peak. And I don't think it was it was the ITV's choice, not the people yeah. making it, which is a shame. That's but then I think that's the way a lot of TV shows, especially in America, go. Yeah. Exactly. So. Hey, a roller disco. You can't get oh, more TVs than a roller, roller disco. disco. I remember was... going to um Thorpe Park and Butler's and I, I could I could never roller skate to save my life. <laughs> I had them and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I um I was watching Zana do the other night, so that's that was all about roller disco. <laughs> I wonder how they filmed this because Normally when they film stuff in a nightclub or whatever, it's actually quite quiet and then they put the music on afterwards. I, th I think that's what they do because you yeah. otherwise you can't pick up the voices. But if you also listen yeah. carefully, the, the music that they roller skating to is a lot like the incidental music that they get throughout <laughs> the entire series. <laughs> I don't think they actually ever pay for anything that uh, might be copyrighted, no. like a chart song or anything like that. Yeah, that's true. There's so nothing I, like that. Yeah, so I think this is just like a a jazzed up version of the incidental <laughs> music. Oh, there's Jock in his leather jacket and his glasses. Yeah. He's obviously the, the hero of the day for whatever reason. Everybody I love the fact Jock. that like it's it's inside a disco, inside a nightclub and they're both like 
jock and Dempsey are both wearing sunglasses. Yes. It's like, it's the 1980s, we have to wear sunglasses indoors because it's cool. <laughs> and also, wasn't it the middle of the day when they went in? <laughs> yeah, because like, when he just walks in the door, it's like, clearly daylight outside. <laughs> clubs that are happening at three o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> i have to say not everything but a lot of harriet's clothes on outfits i would probably wear now oh yeah i love i love most of them let's put it that way there are a couple of dodgy outfits um, oh yeah yeah there's a couple of questionable ones i'm, I'm not quite a bit i'm not a fan of the bow tie oh, I'm not unless it's matt smith in doctor who then that's <laughs> But her makeup was really good, considering it was the 80s, it could have been awful. But no, yeah, I like it. It's not the proper full on. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you when we'll get to that bit later on, when she changes her makeup later on. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he's not actually Scottish. Just <laughs> <laughs> actor. <laughs> it's a bad accent. Of course, the days before um, mobile phones of any, although there is a couple of cell phones, car phones, isn't there, featuring the series? I think there might be one or two, but it literally it was around the time they were all started, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what was I watching the other day when you think, oh, they would, oh, Friends I was watching the other day, and you oh, think even then, yeah. they're so much more recent, and maybe not till right to the very end, nobody there had mobile phones. No, it's so strange, just now it's just so... Yeah, so much you take for granted, like we yeah. take for granted now. We think it really wasn't that long ago oh. in the scheme of things. Frost oh, fight. Knob. <laughs> so. Oh, but. nice, a nice um choreographed fight. <laughs> like bundles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Dempsey in his convertible Mercedes. Yep. As of course he would. Drive One him. thing I noticed re when recently watching Remington Steel. Uh huh. Is that um, Laura Holt has the same, um, has a golf the same as Harriet Makepeace. Oh, oh, cool. They both have the same. They both have the same car. So clearly, it was the female detective car of the nineteen eighties. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> standard. But issue. no matter how many times they crashed it in Remington Steel, it was always there in the following episode. <laughs> <laughs> do 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 do. Oh, I love this. We used, we used to play this in the playground. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Run around pretending to shoot each other. <laughs> and, and I had the annual, I think I had the annual for my Christmas. And I had the um, Dempsey make these walkie talkies, which were like on a, I think oh. it was on like a 10 foot lead. So, so you could actually, it weren't proper walkie talkies, no. they were connected to each other. <laughs> so unless you were in the same room or you like sat on your bedroom floor with a door and then put it under the other door. <laughs> <laughs> and here's um a great angela something her name is oh yes she uh, was she's in um face gam but she was also in angels wasn't she yeah and she was also in that fantastic episode of only fools and horses she was the one that delbo and rodney rescue when they're dressed as batman and robin oh yes that's correct. she was the one that they were trying to mug and her name is it's angela something um, bear with me. I think I was on here She's somewhere. From Space Gang, it's shocking. Angela Bruce. Angela Bruce, that's it. She was in a lot of, um, and she must have been quite um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not groundbreaking, but one of the first black actresses who played characters where it didn't matter what race they were. You know what I mean? She was just cast as in this one. She just yeah. nurse. You know. Yeah, it wasn't. In the, of course, in the late seventies, it was. Oh, sorry, screeching. Got <laughs> <Dad> outside. <laughs> He's driving thing. past. They're reenacting a Dempsey make his chase scene outside your house. <laughs> Sounds like it. Oh, <laughs> uh, do you know what else she was in? She was in um the um Parallel Universe episode of Red Dwarf. She was the female Lister. That's right. Yes. Yes. Great actress. Now they're they're visiting Jock in hospital, and he's not now. He I can't remember why he's annoyed at them. Is he annoyed because they've got them beaten up? He he's annoyed because he thinks that they led the guys that beat him up, the um yeah. gang that are doing the 
protection racket. He thinks that they led them to him. Yeah. That's why Harriet's That's now why. Yes. feeling really guilty and she's paying for his hospital treatment out of her own pocket. And That's right. She's apologising and he just is about to chuck a glass of water in her face. Yes, I was say, yeah, I think he's just about to chuck some water on her. Which is so, yeah. for private treatment. Come on, dog. <laughs> she, so she pours it for him and then he chucks it at her. Classic TV. But. Do people actually throw drinks on each other? Who knows? <laughs> Never seen it in real life. Don't see drops. Make peace home. She's having a bit of a look yeah, at that she's... look he's given her. <laughs> yeah, you just would. <laughs> it's gorgeous. He gives you that look. It's like, well, yeah, you just like yeah. <laughs> so he's Walk dropping up. her off, but he knows she's not, and like he can tell he's he's worried about her. And he, he just, I'm, I'm, I've only now just put the subtitles on. I miss what he said. But he offers to stay with her, doesn't he? And she's like, no, I'm fine. But he knows. Yeah. But she's he not going to her car. He knows her so well. <laughs> she's getting her car and she's going off. She's about to drive off and then... And he's going to... He blocks her way. Yeah, because he knows she was lying to him. <laughs> he's not impressed. Oh, he does look so... Look at that. He could have been a great Bond if he was British. <laughs> An American Bond. Yeah. <laughs> so smooth. I am so gutted I missed him. It's just so singing in the rain. Oh, yeah. We weren't able to see love letters with them both. That was amazing. That was... The one thing I've seen that other people haven't seen is like, oh, they came <laughs> in and did a unique thing. Very rare. Yeah, that's cool. I do think Man. I saw Ennis Barber when I, I went to, because when I was at uni, we used to get free tickets for stuff all the time. Oh, yeah. Because it was, it, obviously, it was free. So we had no money. So we'd go get audience tickets, everything. And we went to go and watch um, Babes in the Wood at Teddington Studios. Oh, yes. Uh huh. And I'm sure she was in the episode we saw. Oh, wow. Uh, that's a very long time ago. It must have been, what, 98, I think, maybe? Mm. See, the front of this restaurant it's a, it's a red concrete building with two red awnings. <laughs> yeah. And it's they go inside, it's like this really posh restaurant from the outside. It looks like some social yeah. club in the back of a council estate. <laughs> Which it probably was. <laughs> <laughs> probably where they got to film. <laughs> so, I can't see what a restaurante hotel or something. What? Restaurante, restaurante Fiori, it says. I swear I need to get my eyes tested. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really need to go to spec savers. It's like other opticians are available. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so she, and he, look, he even let her drive his car. Oh, yeah. Greater love hath no man. So when he gets to uh, the very first episode, yeah, he arrives at the airport and he gets that car on hire from somewhere like Hertz yeah. or wherever. Yeah. So the NYPD, are they still paying for that car? Because that's going to cost a fortune per day. <laughs> it's like, it must be. And he has that car for like three seasons. <laughs> it's like, that must cost a fortune. Yeah. And being well, a convertible Merc as well, that's not going to be cheap. Well, they're, they're, they're keeping them, you know, they're paying for them to be, they don't have to pay for them in Britain, uh, in America, to be, uh, you know, in hiding. They don't have to pay in new identity and all that stuff. So they've saved money. They're probably going, that's, true. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> We'll pay, we'll pay for his ridiculous car. If he's yeah. bought one outright, the amount he's paid just for the hire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, check out the 1980s wallpaper. Yes. It's very burgundy red and gold. Smoked glass on the table. Always, everything was smoked glass on the 80s. If you do want to, like, people, every, for you those listening, do you want to watch this? I think it is still available on iPlayer. Not iPlayer, sorry, ITV Hub. ITV Hub, yeah. It seems to be the last couple year or so they've been like repeating it every day, and then when it ends, they're starting it again. So, however, it is edited. Very bad, yes. It is very heavily edited, and I think um, Forces TV have been airing it recently as well. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, it, that that has been unedited, I believe. Oh, is it? Oh, that's good. So, but I can't get that channel, so I I can't confirm it. But it's what. People have yeah. mentioned when it's been discussed on Twitter. 
Yeah. Okay, so what's happening? Sorry. So you see, Dempsey really is just acting like the uh, the guard. He's letting make peace in, um, do her thing. He's yeah, he's keeping his distance. He's watching and yeah. then just like. So basically, in this episode, so it's the protection racket going on. This they've gone to find out um about more about it from this guy. They find out the guy ends up in hospital and Harriet's feeling guilty and now she's confronted him and she's just chucked a bowl of pasta over his head. Steve Frost is his, is his hard man. And he, yeah, and he really just, is that tall. <laughs> he's really yeah. Just leapt up, and as soon as he leapt up, Dempsey stepped forward because nobody yeah. needs to lunge at Makepeace. And yeah, now, he's ready to, like, yeah. Dempsey's having a go at Makepeace. How dare she do this? What's the matter with you? Have you gone crazy? You throw food on a guy like that? What are you, out of your mind? Listen, I got a better idea. If you really want to destroy him, you want his life, huh? You want to bring him down? This is his car. Go on. Let the air out of his tires. Wait, I got an even better idea. Go to Whole Hog. Go on. Steal his windshield wipers, too. Let's go. Can you see it now, huh? London gangster brought the really an undercover detective. Four flats. Right? No wipers. Imagine it, Sergeant. It could rain. He'd be crippled. Shut up, Dempsey. I will when I see some sense in your eyes. Your brain's falling out over some punk kid. He's not that punk kid. Oh, then what is he? You emotionally involved with him? I'm not emotionally involved. Then what? Tell me. He is a human being. But what was Sims? A chicken? Huh? I didn't see a grab for the pasta when he got shot. You know who has the highest percentage of suicide? The most broken marriages? Huh? The highest degree of alcoholism. What are you talking about? Cops. I'm talking about cops who let their emotions foul them up. And that's what I see happening to you. Work and emotion, they don't go together. She's too involved because it, he's her um, guy on the street. He's her intel. Yeah. And she's not really paying any attention. She's just thinking, oh, he didn't do this, so I'm going to go in. Follow this lead yeah. tomorrow, and yeah. she's not. She's not paying any attention to what he's saying. No. So. Oh, string fellows. Okay, out of all the nightclubs in London, I don't know why <laughs> this one. You're, you're, I don't know how you've managed it, but you're actually ahead of me by a few seconds. So oh, is, oh, okay. Hold on. Right, I'm going to pause it momentarily. I'm now on twenty three oh three. Yep, you're a few seconds ahead of me. Hang on. Okay, go. <laughs> She's just got out of the car. Yeah, she just got out of the car. Yeah, you were like... It's a really cool, opposite string photos, it's a really cool um, TV sci-fi cult TV shop. Oh, cool. It's like magazines and merchandise and stuff. Beautiful oh, piece of trivia. Dempsey brooding in a bar, something we see quite a lot through the series. Oh, with the pink neon lights in the background. Yeah. So Beautiful. 80s. What's she up so, to? What's she going to trouble school and get herself into? She yeah, he's nursing a her. drink at a bar, thinking about Makepeace. Yeah. And after having his drink, he then drives back to Stringfellows. <laughs> yeah. Different, times, had one, different though, times. In their defence, he only had one, from what we can gather, so we won't hold it against him. Oh, check out that 80s discotheque. Oh, yes. Lots of lights Lovely. and cheesy dancing. Yeah, big hair. It's always funny when they do a, a disco in a, a nightclub in a... TV show and it's clearly this is worth watching for the 80s disco fashion and the ladies big hair yes if it's you want to get an idea of what it looked like it's like Kaylee in the episode of car show when she's drunk yes it's that level of bigness I think it's funny that there's only like 12 people <laughs> <laughs> trying to make it look like a really busy night yeah they clearly oh, went to this out during he's the day dancing to the music he's like yeah man that's yeah, crazy. He, He's sh shoulder dancing while he's walking yeah. down the stairs. <laughs> oh, and there's Makepeace draped all over some yuppie. Yeah, see, they're all in tuxedos. I mean, really? Oh, no. we, I mean, obviously, I'm, we're too young to know, but do people really go wear tuxedos to string fellows? No idea. And she's there in a jean jacket and leggings. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that will be relevant in a minute. We'll come back to that. Yes. Dempsey, Biden is time. Oh, hello. Lady Harriet is getting drunk on champagne. Yes. And she's about to notice 
Hello. I know him. Hi, Harry. the line they cut from the daytime version oh, did they cut it really yeah they cut that oh. so she's introducing him to her friend who's wearing a very backless red dress backless red dress and diamond earrings he's, he's, my, he's mine he belongs to me he's my private dick. that's brilliant that's a oh it's so funny so because she's suddenly so um of him, you know. Yeah, but she, yeah. he seems really a little bit embarrassed, or not embarrassed, uncomfortable to be there. Yeah. Because like that. she fills the glass she, right up to the top. And that is clearly just water, because look, or <laughs> very, very diluted apple juice. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, Dempsey is admiring the red dress without the back. Oh, by the way, if anyone, wait, we, I'm sorry, which we'll probably mention this at the beginning. But this episode is Tequila Sunrise. It's the fifth oh, yeah. episode of the second season. Yeah. So if you do want to go and take a look, that's what episode this is. But it's it's like it's, this episode is or this scene anyway. It's like it's a role reversal of you know he's normally the brash, hey, whoa, you know, cool guy, and suddenly there's Makepeace with her arm draped round him saying, no, he's mine. He belongs to me. Maybe yeah. it's new endo. It's not. He's it, like, uh, what's happening? <laughs> And even even though like she's the one that's like having the issue with the guy being in hospital and she's the one that's drunk, he seems really uncomfortable and he seems a little bit more vulnerable than she does when he arrives yeah. at this bar. It's she's, she's this is it her introduced to the other characters. It's her world, isn't it? This is where all the posh poshos hang out. So yeah, he's I guess in so, her territory. Like, all my friends are all, they're all knocking back champagne, they're all there in tuxedos and yeah. he's maybe out of his comfort zone a little bit. And here's so here is Makepeace returned from the bathroom wearing her friend's dress. Which and is earrings. And earrings and, <laughs> and makeup <laughs> and got her hair different. But, but again, we mentioned the makeup. Even then, even though her makeup is different from the rest yeah. of the season, it's not your proper full on no, it's blue eye shadow, massive cheek yeah. piece makeup. It is still really pretty. Yeah. I am. Um, it's it's such a major thing in that scene. To, that she's gone. You let you've complimented that woman in the dress. I want to be that woman you compliment, so I'm going to wear the dress. It's a yeah. huge thing for her to do. A huge she wants the attention on her, and it's like because it's like yeah, she's basically she's, saying, "Pay attention to me. Look at me lustfully." <laughs> so they've just got a taxi back to. Make pieces how she's making them more tequila sunset drinks because she's put the orange juice in the wrong way around. I find, I have to say, I find this scene a bit cringy, but not, not here, just the very last second of it. Yeah, because <laughs> she's and it does seem like You're under an odd place it. to cut it as well because, yes. Because as an as an audience, we're really voyeuristic. We were like, okay, what what? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean obviously you know, that like... that is the plot that we've not know what happened. We've got yeah. to make assumptions, but it would have been nice I think if that's they'd, what... they'd kissed or something. You know, just gone a little bit further than her leaning into him. Oh, and here we have Chaz, Tony Asaba. Oh, I love Chaz. And then. Uh, very cheerful Dempsey. Very, yes. The next morning at SI10. Yep. He's a very happy bunny this morning. 
He is. I don't want that you have her. <laughs> Telling jokes with the guys. Ooh, mullet! I know, you saw that. Red check shirt and a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, my dad had that jumper as well. With beige man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and Here. Harriet's very hungover. Very hungover. Sunglasses indoors. Again, that's another outfit that wouldn't would still be yeah. day. Maybe Green. not the sunglasses. <laughs> no, maybe not. But the grey pencil skirt, cream jumper, quite nice. Yeah. Oh, this is the thing as well. You, it's just in scenes like this that you realise that it stands out the most that Harriet is the only female in that environment. Oh, yeah. He's, totally. out, he's laughing with the guys. You've got spikings in the other office. There is no other female in no. that domain at all. Yeah. And so it's very much a boys' club. And she's very thinks, conscious of the fact that she he's joking with them and of course she's yes. her paranoia has gone into overdrive. She thinks it's all about her. It's all locker room talk. Which is quite funny because the next scene does in fact take place in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> oh the irony. Yes. <laughs> Tiger, he calls her. Oh, yeah, I... that, that's a, that's the thing. If you were to watch the holiday you make because that could be a drinking game is every time he calls her Tiger. Yes. <laughs> And the thing is, you know he's doing it to wind her up. <laughs> you were wild. He's teasing her. Because <laughs> he probably knows she doesn't. Or he's just not sure if she remembers or not. One of the reasons I love this episode so much is the conversation that happens later on. I just, I think it's brilliantly written and it's one I quote a lot, so. I think it's a good episode for their interactions. I'm not sure what it said on the back of the paper. I'm sure it said something about like looking weary on the back of that newspaper, which is kind of ironic because the she's hung over. Yes. Oh, Spikings isn't happy either. He's never happy. No. But it's only meat piece that's been called in. It's not the boat. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, she's in trouble. Don't go chucking pasta on people. <laughs> yes. They've been told to lay off, stop following yeah. the bad guy. You can't go around. I think in the scheme of things, of the bad guys in Dempsey Make Beast, these are fairly, they're not the, the worst out of all no. of them. They don't go around, well, maybe they do a little bit at the end, but they've not gone around shooting. Why do you, I'm, I'm well, lying, they, actually. I'm thinking, they're they're not shooting people. I know, I just realised as I'm saying that. I was like, they're not going around shooting people, they shot the chicken, there's a gunfight at the end. I was like, yeah, actually, I'm talking nonsense, so we'll cut this bit. <laughs> Oh, we'll leave it in and you can have a laugh. <laughs> so, I, uh, so for any nonsense I do spew this evening, I'm blaming on my second COVID job. Blame on your job, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a side effect of the AstraZeneca. <laughs> whatever's happening on, on screen, the subtitles just told me that he just said, take Jared to lunch, lunch, lunch today. <laughs> I do like it when you, if you ever watch anything on YouTube and, oh, so we're having a car chase outside of my flat now. So it's like, <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes with the um, subtitles are wrong, they're actually quite funny. Yes, the automatic, so, automatically generated subtitles are hilarious. So, yeah, Chaz has just winked at Makepeace because he's oh, having a yeah. cheeky gossip with Dempsey, so she's again being paranoid. When um, Trikings goes to Dempsey to say what's going on with Makepeace, you know, like he'll know her inner thoughts. <laughs> well, they're fairly clued into each other most of the time, I think. I think so, yeah. Especially as the series goes on, not immediately, but as no. when, definitely in the third season. I wonder what Spikings thinks about what's between them. He probably thinks, I don't care, just as long as you bring in results. Oh, and here we go. Hiya, Tiger. Okay, okay. Yeah, I had a hard night. What's the matter with you? I've had enough. Enough what? You're making me feel sick out there. I'm making you sick? Did we or didn't we? Did we or didn't we what? You know exactly what I mean. I haven't the faintest idea. Sleep with each other. Come on, don't beat about the bush. Did we quit? You don't remember. Well, not much. Don't worry, I'm sure you were terrific. So, mm. there you go. Fine. That's it then. By the way, if it isn't too 
too much to ask of your ego. Would you mind sparing me the big display out there? More than you? Well, it's a little crass, I feel. Ah, sweetheart, I'll tell you what bothers me. I just take two big insults from you that I don't take from nobody. Correction, make that three. I don't know which one is worse. One, I don't brag about something. Unless it's worth bragging about. Two, I'm no Prince Charles who has to get his charge by sleeping with some lush. And three, baby, believe me. Even if you'd been comatose, lobotomized, anesthetized, and deep frozen, if I had, you would have remembered. Are you trying to tell me we didn't do it? What, is there something wrong with my speech? The verb's in the wrong place? Do you mean we didn't? Read my lips. N-O. You satisfied? No irony intended. never a good sign when you have to ask if you've had sex with someone or not no i think even if you were that drunk i don't know i think you kind of know wouldn't you <laughs> well this thing because i don't drink i can't say for sure what your how bad the memory gaps are i don't think i've ever been that drunk that i don't remember everything i remember like 99 percent of stuff but i don't think i've ever been that drunk i love his reaction yeah Three big insults from you. <laughs> so another series where they thought they, they got really drunk. They thought they it was the upper hand, wasn't it? Where Caroline and yes. Charlie get drunk and they think she thinks they've slept together and they only yeah. two. It so is a fairly it is fairly a cool. common trope. Yeah. I love the fact that he says, you think I'm some, you know, uh, charmless guy who uh, sleeps with somebody who's drunk. That was a very early and unusual thing in the 80s to be saying, I won't sleep with you when you're drunk because that's taken advantage. It was kind exactly. of common. You know? that's, I mean, that's also, but it's also the decent thing to do. I mean, obviously. Yeah, it, absolutely. But, I mean, yeah. But, I mean, if you look at film like um, 16 Candles, a film 16 Candles, there's a whole bit about taking advantage of a drunk girl passing her around between teenagers. And it's just seen as a joke. So yeah. for, for him to be saying, no, that's wrong to, to sleep with somebody who's drunk, that's a really advanced thing. Pretty, um, that's, yeah, for 1985, that's quite progressive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it shouldn't be. It should always no. have been wrong. It should always have been that you're drunk. I'm not going to, you can't, yeah. you might be wanting it but you're not you, you might, might be missing not, it and really, you're not going to yeah. do it and it's it is but Dempsey's a modern man what can we say <laughs> yes he may seem like a, a dinosaur <laughs> but uh, he's not he's sweet he, he wouldn't do that to her and and he wouldn't take advantage like that and it, I think he gives off all this bravado but it's like in the episode love you to death he actually says that i'm not the romeo of the nypd no like, he's not <laughs> he says something like oh um I, I could tell you tell us it would curl your hair and she says i've always wanted curly hair <laughs> <laughs> i love the way spikings comes into the locker room just like holds the door open a little bit like afraid what he might see it's like oh, I'm, I'm walking in here very carefully he's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> Should I be walking in here or should I wait? Yes. <laughs> okay, so at the hospital, Jock has escaped from the hospital after being confronted by one of the henchmen who he shot. So not Stephen Fry, it was the other one who's oh, very, very Stephen sorry, Frost. I don't know who his name is. <laughs> so. No, other bald, half bald man. <laughs> henchman number two, that's not Stephen Fry, <laughs> Stephen Fry, Stephen Frost. No. <laughs> Stephen Fry was not in Dempsey Makepeace, no. that would have been interesting. <laughs> Why on, earth is, why on earth does Dempsey's jacket have a pocket in the middle of the back? What on earth? Or is it one of those is it one of those coats that you can fold up and put it in its own put it in its oh, own? Like little packet coat things yeah. that you get like minutes, like your rain mac. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dempsey is, is a much softer man than he makes out, or at least 
a make piece make them out to be. He's what are they? Kind of, like, what are they watching on their television in the video shop? Oh, the video, video oh, shop. Video Remember shops. them? Oh, back in the day. They've even got record players. They've even got records for hire. Yeah. Like, oh, video tape and vinyl. We're proper 80s now. <laughs> Kind rewind. So Jock has gone to the video shop to, so to kind of draw out the henchman. He's one of the prop shops. That, it's a shop that's under the protection racket. So he's gone yeah. there to. I have to roll, laugh at all the bad guys out. I have to laugh at the thought of a, a record shop being run by a Middle East man in a suit who looks like he <laughs> works for the. It is like- yeah, it looks like he should be an accountant, not like yeah. somebody behind the video shop. <laughs> no, the video shops that we used to go to, I had like logo t- t shirts, it was somewhere like Blockbuster. Yeah. They just wore like random yeah. TV. Casual, t- yeah, casual <laughs> clothes. It was always young men that ran them. Well, yeah, with long hair, with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> In my experience. Not only because I thought we get, they'd get to watch all the videos for free, so. Yeah. Oh, Jock's destroying the TVs. Oh, look at the size of that telly box. <laughs> we used to have a TV television. like that, and the cat used to sleep on top of it because it was hot. <laughs> and then, like, one day it didn't work, and the, <laughs> the radio rental guy came out because it was a rental <laughs> one and had all cat hair in the back of it. And it's like, you shouldn't really let your cat sleep on the television. <laughs> it's like... Thing with thing yeah. TVs, you can't put stuff on top of them. You can't use them as a shelf. <laughs> I only used to have, like, a gold... Carriage clock. Carriage or a clock, yeah, it was exactly ornament of a lady or yeah. <laughs> and the big antenna aerial. <laughs> oh, you used to have to bash the top of it to get your picture. Yeah. <laughs> you have to put it on ten minutes before your program because it needs to warm up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the like, the light in the middle when you turned it off. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we're like, old. Oh, Lucy, get up and turn over. So, I did I turned over last time. <laughs> you go you turn over. It's like the pre well, this was- this was one year before we got our first video cassette recorder. We got a VCR in 1986. Oh, we didn't get one till 1989. And I only know that I recorded the last four episodes of Moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dempsey Beat Piece was one of the first things I recorded. I recorded the final episode, Guardian Angel, on its first hearing, and I still have that video. <laughs> oh my god, so that was on. The 1st of November, 1986. There we go, yeah. I have a video and it has has Guardian Angel, it has an episode of Rhymes and Steel, and it has an episode of the Late Late Breakfast Show, No Edmonds Show, that got cancelled. Oh my goodness. Oh, what Rhymes and Steel is it? I think it's the one with the um, uh, circus, when they go undercover at the circus. okay. I think one one of the future... Pajama parties will definitely include an episode of Remington Steel. Definitely. Okay, so they're back in the roller disco. It is deserted. And it's I think nighttime. Stephen Fry has just been shot. Stephen Fry is not Stephen Fry. Stephen, Stephen Fry. Fry. <laughs> See, oh, this, I'm blaming this flipping jab. My brain oh, no, is it's, not. It's daytime again. It's a different daytime, but the uh, roller disco is empty this time. The roller disco. Here they come with their guns. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I don't know what the rule was in um in Britain with police and guns at that time. Was that why they were MI six? Because no, SI ten. Right. SI ten. They were seat like undercover. Yeah. So they were allowed to have guns. Kind of elite. Yeah. It's, the roller just goes on, but they still have disco lighting and some smoke. <laughs> yeah, they've got the smoke, the music. Oh, oh no, no, Stephen Frost just got shot. Stephen Frost <laughs> just got shot. <laughs> it's only the man left. Oh, but Jock got him. And Jock has got a gun to Milton John's. Yes. So, I don't quite understand the relationship between these two. No, I have no idea either. I don't quite know what that was really all about. It's not really made that clear. Yeah, exactly. All we know is that, like, for some reason he got beat him up and now he's after revenge because he beat him up. And I don't yeah. quite... I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I don't quite know. <laughs> I think that's it. More than that. see, the plot of it was a bit lost to me, this one. Oh, oh. No, no, 
bullets have you got left do you feel lucky punk? So they both just pulled the trigger and both barrels were empty <laughs> so jock didn't kill milton johns and Dempsey didn't kill jock, kill jock. And they all smiled happy <laughs> as close as a happy ending as they can get and our spy kings is there with Chaz and all the half the police force of west london well yeah. east london or wherever they are plus all the people from the real roller disco who weren't actually in the roller disco but okay they're suddenly yeah, all, all gathered the there, isn't, yeah <laughs> She's got himself a cigar. So, you know, she, yeah, so she, but she happened to have a lighter in her bag. Oh, yeah. next time you might not be so lucky so yeah. what was it about him being a gel- gentleman earlier <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Come back. laughs> but yeah you... I say, that yeah. is the, the most the, the biggest chippy thing in Dempsey maybe is just looks which obviously you're not going to see it when it's all yeah, the one up. the other chippy thing is I think we'll probably do that episode at some point is love you to death it's where yes. they pretend to be having an affair and they have this yeah. conversation and you just think but, but what is I mean, a whole... there's not a lot of shippy dialogue between them you know there's not a lot of talk of it's all just chemistry let's face it, it, it yeah I mean, I mean even if you think the the very first kiss is in the first episode yeah they kiss again i think it's maybe episode two or three and then and that's only because that's... they don't want to get caught and they're hiding the audio equipment in them i think they're in Hampstead heath or somewhere yeah and um, and other than that, there's nothing. And then there is some kind of revelation of their feelings in the very last episode, but it's not yeah. directly. No, not, like, kind of indirectly to each other. But except when she leaves and he says, "I I can't do this without you" or whatever, and yeah. he begs her to come back. And and but, then she basically says, "What do you think? I'd you know, both of them." wouldn't stay well I, I would say the biggest revelation in that episode in guardian angel is when um our oh, name just dropped out my head what's her name Kate O'Mara. The, yes uh, kate o'mara her character when she says why do you make these why have you left i don't understand it and she suddenly goes ah and she realizes that make pieces emotionally involved <laughs> well even spiking does spiking actually takes yeah. Dempsey for a drink that's right but then i don't understand it it's a little bit then spiking is kind of makes Dempsey realize it maybe yeah. he might have feelings for him but then he says to him goes, goes do you think i'm boring and it's like that's just the weird i don't understand that it's question because he's because he's um friend the homeless artist dude says to him that you're boring that's boring and so that's of why course, right it's, it's only taken me like eight viewings to figure out <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's not a lot in Dempsey and Matrix. it's not like there's a lot of um scenes where it's not like there's a lot of almost kisses or moments when you think you know, but at, at other times it's like they've 
they're ha- they're sleeping together on the sly, and we don't know about it because the way they. I'm act, sure they were. I I reckon right. If, if, if like, just hypothetically, if it were real, and you just cut yeah. him, it's like there's a scene. I think it's a scene where um. It's the one where he goes undercover. They go undercover and they're trying to infiltrate an illegal boxing, bare, fight, yeah. bare knuckle fighting ring. Yeah. And it starts off. They're leaving a party. They've been somewhere together. Like they're proper dressed up, really posh. And they've been at some fancy yeah. shindig. And he says he's something about having bubble bath. And he says something about having champ. She says something about having champagne. And he's about to drive her home. And it's like, and there's no yeah. protest. There's no disagreement oh. about it and if it wasn't for the fact that somebody got chucked over I think probably Hammersmith flyover <laughs> and it's just like so you kind of get the impression that I think <laughs> it just it wasn't canon but I think they were having an affair yeah <laughs> it's, it's like the episode I can't again I can't remember but one of these things where they meet these episodes all running one in my brain but um again the, it might be the same one when they're undercover no, is that when he, he's acting as the guy's bodyguard and they get attacked and they end up staying in the hotel the night with the guy yes. and his wife? Um, Which wait, it starts off when they, she's at the boat at the beginning with her friend, yes. she's pretending to be a yes. journalist, and That's she shoots it. the guy. Yes. And then he goes, Um, he pretends to be a, he f- steals a car and they, he gets That's hired right. as a driver. Real man. That's what it's called, around. real man. Yeah. And uh, and they, they, so they stay in the hotel or in the apartment, I don't know, of this couple. In the, and he's yeah. both slept on the, the fold-down sofa and um, Peace is wearing his shirt. And it's like, yeah. so were they? Or, you know? <laughs> it's so strange. There's a lot of implied potential, yeah. and it's... It was it was never canon, but I'm sure no. that like if you watched it from the beginning and you watched it all again, you think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, one, the one where they're pretending to be is it the one where they're pretending to be homeless, and he says something and and like that she doesn't protest and he's like, oh, I think it, she said that they um he's that was fairly early on I think that one I think yeah. he says something about he can relate to her more when they're undercover. Oh, that's right. And they start having conversation. He thinks he just tells something about an Irish song, and he says something about this prostitute that taught it to him. And then they start having a conversation. He says, "I can relate to you better when we're in these scenarios." And yeah. normally, I think something like that, perhaps. Yeah. And, and there's one with a newspaper where he like covers her with a newspaper. He's he opens a, a, like a big newspaper like the Times, and he puts it over her head. So that they're yeah. both inside, and she's not, she she smiles and just looks friendly. She's not like get off, you know. <laughs> it's like oh, he really invaded our personal space there. But <laughs> yeah, you, it's making me want to watch all of them again. And for some reason, I do associate the MC Meat Piece with the summer, which is odd because obviously I think oh, I think also because I do a bit now because I watched them all probably twice during the first lockdown. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like it was last summer they started. I think it was like, ITV started repeating them last summer. Yeah. Just I think just before lockdown, or maybe around the start of lockdown. And so I think I watched them all then. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know why. Well, but okay, then I, had to, so... I did have them on DVD about ten years ago, so I watched them all. Right, and then so, but it's it's classic. Yeah.